Tove and Neil. I'm reading Tove Jansen's short story The Cartoonist, about a cartoonist who, after twenty years of faithful drawing, suddenly gives up and leaves his studio and his celebrated cartoon character Blubby in the middle of an adventure. A new cartoonist is forced to quickly take over the series, which is contracted in several countries and therefore must continue without a break. The newspapers and their readers demand theirs. The older cartoonist tells later in the short story how his popular series intruded into his entire existence, how existence ultimately became only a hunt for new spreads, new ideas. How at the same time he desperately tried to have control over all the products the series generated, plastic figures, wooden figures, curtains, textiles, films, plays, etc. In the end, he felt how his cartoon character had taken over his entire life. He got up and left. I think of Tove Jansen and her moment troll, a creation that grew and grew and in a similar way took over her whole life. It is not difficult to imagine that she is writing about herself in the short story. The moments provided her with a secure income, but at the same time she felt occupied by her creation and by all those who loved the moments. The day she was finally able to hand over the Daily Moment series to her brother was one of her happiest days, I've read. She was finally free. In the last book about the Moment Trolls, late in November, the trolls are not even in it. Tove makes me think of Neil Young who, after three solo albums, released the record Harvest, which in a way became Neil Young's Moment Troll. With songs like Heart of Gold and Old Man, he suddenly became loved by thousands of fans worldwide who just want more in the same style. But instead of continuing in the popular middle lane, he chose to run down the drain for ten years with sprawling rock records that did not at all appeal to his newfound audience. I guess it wasn't a quest for freedom. I also think of Lou Reed, whose flat transformer became a personal monster that he felt compelled to fight for the rest of his life. Take a walk on the wild side, heart of gold and momentrolin three unparalleled successes, forever inscribed in the world of rock and literature, but all three entangled their creators in a tangle of expectations and high demands. The last thing the old cartoonist in Tove's short story says to his young replacement is that if things go wrong, he can still consider stepping in and drawing a few strips. The love for one's creation still seems to remain when all demands and expectations have been stripped away. There is a lesson to be learned here, in the long run, Cherishing the desire is probably more important than achieving success. Matthias is an author, editor, and illustrator. Thank you for listening to or watching this episode. Please like, comment and subscribe.